Um, over the next couple of hours, uh, we want to go through um, you know, several key things. Um, uh, most specifically, um, last month, we launched what is called as a security delivery platform. And we'll double click on that and mean what that actually implies for networking engineers and for network organizations to help um, meet the security imperative of, um, of their organizations. Okay, I see that some uh, there's some new faces here, so I'm going to start off with a quick overview of Gigamon, but a quick show of hands. Is everybody familiar with Gigamon? Everybody is. Okay, of course you are. <laughs> so does anybody want me to skip this and go directly into what the announcement is? Okay, so I'll be very brief about this. So here's the agenda for the day today, um, and I'm pretty sure that we'll take up most of the two hours. Um, I'll do a very short intro about Gigamon. Won't take more than seven or eight minutes, uh, probably less. We'll talk a little bit more about what GigaSecure, the security delivery platform that we announced last month. And then Patrick Riley, um, Senior Product Manager at Gigamon, will talk about inline bypass and very specifically about inline deployment of uh, security applications. We'll do a demo that will be done by uh, Noam Sirkin and um, Gina. Noam is probably a familiar face to you by now, since this is his third uh, networking field day. And like we did last time, this time we have a partner presentation from Cisco, and Eric will be presenting very specifically about the Cisco Firepower products and how they fit in as far as um, the overall uh, solution is, is concerned. And finally, we'll, uh, we'll have some time for Q&A as well. So I think this will probably take about an hour to 45, hour to 50 minutes, um, and we'll make sure that um, we'll end on time. Okay. As always, keep your questions coming. You don't need to hold it off to the very end. Okay. So very quick overview about, about Gigamon. Uh, as a company, we were founded in 2004. You are right now in the Gigamon headquarters. We moved in here in April of last year. And uh, the company was founded mainly with the mission of providing visibility into infrastructure. And visibility can mean multiple things. It's used for multiple purposes. It could be for security and vulnerability management. It could be for uh, network and application performance management. It could be for customer experience management. What we're focusing on today is how it could be applied specifically for security, because that is one of the big drivers of, uh, of visibility deployments today. Uh, from a footprint perspective, over 1,700 customers, including 77 of the Fortune 100 and over 370 of the Fortune 100, uh, sorry, Fortune 1000. Um, our, our mission really is to deliver what we call as active visibility to help organizations transform the, um, and to next generation business infrastructure. And what that means is when you look at visibility deployments, a lot of customers start off with a very, very simple project in mind, right? And that simple project could be, I got a lot of operational tools. I need to understand what the performance of my applications is, performance of my network is. Or it could be, I want to start off by looking at you know, how, can I, how can I connect these intrusion protection systems in line with the network, right? It starts off as a very, very specific project, but over time, you see that that consolidation optimization transforms themselves into something that's much more of a security mission that goes across the enterprise or goes across the service provider. And the last stage, or the final, the final stage of evolution is when they use the visibility infrastructure for getting better insight and better action. And we see customers at various stages of the transition depending on at what point they've deployed it. Right? And a key central theme here is that the tools that are used in terms of understanding the data can't really keep up with the speed of the network. We all know that networks are getting faster and faster. They're getting more virtualized, which means the disaggregation creates new blind spots. And along the way, what you'll find is that there is a missed opportunity for organizations if they don't change the way as to how they secure infrastructure or how they monitor infrastructure. So we look at this as about four different steps. The first is, you know, you start off by having what we call as tap and aggregation, which is you tap multiple links in the network and you aggregate the traffic before delivering. That's one of the most basic foundational aspects, right? The next stage of it is how do you intelligently filter and replicate the traffic to multiple tools? Those tools would be consumers of the traffic. Number three would be how do you transform the packets? So for example, uh, you may want to mask off sensitive portions of the, of the traffic before you deliver it to the tools, more for compliance reasons. Other possibilities could be 
perhaps you want to dupl deduplicate all the um, uh, packets coming in into the visibility infrastructure because you're tapping multiple points in the infrastructure. <coughs> and lastly, it's about traffic intelligence. A growing amount of traffic today is encrypted in SSL. So being able to decrypt the traffic is a good example of transformations that could be done before it's delivered to the tool. A growing amount of traffic in data centers today is encapsulated in VXLAN or encapsulated in other modern headers, which could not be, which may not be able, uh, understood by the application performance management tools. Okay, so those are the kinds of traffic intelligence that could be done. So overall, this is typically how a <coughs> typical visibility infrastructure looks, which is there are multiple points in the infrastructure. Customers could start off with just one or two locations in the core where they're tapping into um, the, the network links. But over time, you see that they often go much more closer to the leaf, especially as it becomes much more mission critical as far as visibility is concerned. And then the key here is applying a lot of these advanced capabilities, um, which we call as uh, applications or traffic intelligence applications that transform the traffic before delivering it to the tools. Okay? Um, we have recently also announced REST-based APIs uh, with, with which uh, not only the tools, but also administrators can use them to have more programmatic interfaces. Uh, you would recall that in the last networking field day, this is at the, on the heels of uh, Cisco Live, um, we did the joint demonstration with uh, JDSU, which is now VRV, that showed how they are consuming the traffic when exercising the APIs. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a good picture in terms of what we do. Uh, the portfolio itself continues to keep expanding, and some of the new things that we have added are um, sorry about that. The new things that we have added are application session filtering, which is a new uh, application that we came out with. Um, and really, what it does is uh, the ability to extract entire application sessions. So, as an example, if you want to filter out only Netflix traffic, you can now do that. If you want to filter out only emails with attachments, you can actually do that. How is this useful? If you look at what's happening in security infrastructure today, many of those tools get overloaded because of irrelevant data being given to it, right? So an email threat protection system just needs to look at email, nothing more. And even more, most of um, uh, the attacks which happen either happen because of embedded hyperlinks or because of attachments, right? So you can actually filter out things that do not qualify those criteria, do not meet those criteria, and deliver that, and that's exactly what application session filtering does. 